visuals between paragraphs enhance the clarity because the reader notice the visuals first. Okay, for a complex system, a schematic diagram is easier to understand. Okay? These are the technical values, but these are the re for reading experience. It's a visual relief because you can imagine you keep reading, reading, reading all the words. Your, your eyes would get tired. Like what I'm doing here, if I present everything using only words, you're going to get bored. That's why in my presentation, you see I use the figures a lot. So when you create visuals, make sure you include sufficient details, again, but only the information needed. You eliminate unnecessary ones. If you have to use a long figure, you can place them into the appendices. In article, we call it the supporting information. In the thesis, is appendices. Typical figure, very simple. Try to use a simple, remember, plain figures. Don't tell, try to be fancy. Do not impress your readers with all the colors, all the traits. What type of figures? Figures include graphs, schematics, images, maps, exploded view, and many others. In engineering, we use graphs. Okay, remember behind each graph, there is a table. Basically, that's how the figure is produced. Then you may ask if figure and the table are the same, why do I need a figure? The graph shows the trend. You can see it's the most straightforward, apparent, comprehensible. Okay. However, tables are more precise. For example, if I have a 3.3, then its square would be 3.3 .3 square. What is it? Uh, whatever it is. But you can see the decimals. There are many types of graphs. I suggest you use very simple ones like this, depending on your research, okay? But that's what typically I use for engineering. There are three types of graphs. This is called dots, okay? This is line, and this is comb. When you have a combination, you use a continuous line for the calculation that uh, you use dots for experimental data. The reason is when you do the measurement, you cannot measure at any data point, right? You cannot have a continuous curve. But when you do calculation, it is the equation. For example, y equal to x squared. When you plot it, it looks like that. The elements in the figure include the figure title, axis, y axis, X axis label, Y axis label, X axis scale, the Y axis scale, it must have a scale, and the origin, origin here, and the borders on the right, if you choose to use so, this is usually optional, but strongly encouraged, because this way you have an area, it's your fingers territory, label, this is a figure to be, right? Okay. This is called a legend. This legend that clearly explains what they are for. And for experimental data, you use the secretary data. For model, you use a continuous data. Some principles to avoid visual clutter. You use terminology that is consistent with the body text. You do not suddenly something show up from the figure. You have no idea what they are. And the text should be comparable with the typeface and the font. Use symbols that are known globally. For example, percentage degree Celsius. If they are defined by yourself, you spell out the words. Let's leave some wide space. Okay, what is a wide space? Uh, just to make your figure look more pleasant. It's not crowded. For labels, again, clarity, conciseness, you only label those relevant to your research. Use word and a universal symbol. When I look at the left one, I have no idea what a Q is for. Is it a fluid? Is it a heat transfer? 
What else can kill be? Depending on your research, right? Then you may say, why do I have to give text? Because you should be able to understand the kill from the text, right? Remember that it violates another principle. You should be able to understand the figure without reading the text. You do not read the text, but you still can understand the figure. But now, when you look at the figure, you cannot understand it. All this would be a question mark. And, oh, x is okay. I would say x, everybody knows x is for one x axis. Then something is missing here. So it's not a well prepared figure for. Now let's look at the right one. For the whole figure, there's no label. What is this? The white one, what are all these? What are all these things? Right? What do they stand for? These are the label challenges. I'm going to highlight another one, raise all. In addition to label challenges, there is a mismatch between font size. This is the mismatch. Colors. If you look at the figure I show you, this is the one, the one my student prepared, black and white. Very nice. You feel like, I don't know about you, I like this figure. Nothing wrong with this figure. If you only want to pick one thing wrong, maybe this B is too big, the font size, right? This size can be smaller. But use neutral color. Never use red, okay? Do not use a red color. Red color is uh, very positive in Asian cultures. In Asia, people love red color. But if you go to a uh, uh, Middle East, in the Americans, in the English speaking countries, okay, that's the difference. So be thoughtful. Just there's a culture here. To avoid those problems, simply use black and white. Give you a few examples. This is from a PhD thesis. It can be simply black and white. Another one, if you look at the map in the same thesis, he is trying to tell where he did the measurement, give a relative location, to red. Okay, you don't need it. You can use black and white, no problem. Okay. This figure was produced by my PhD student when he was writing his article. When I revised it, I said, you have to change. You can easily change to the dashed line, no problem. Okay, and it's very clear. Okay, you got to be color sensitive. Look at this one. When you print it out in the black and white paper, you cannot tell the difference. So you use a dash line, different line thickness, different line style. You can mismatch in the font size. Okay, I already showed this one. This is a manuscript prepared by my students. Of course, it's not the final version, but when I review it, this is the main text about the 12. But when I look at this one, pretty much everything here is maybe seven. Edge. Schematics are frequently used in engineering. When you produce the figure, if you use black and white, you can simply just give it a name, just use the words. For example, with this kind of uh, angle, I just say crank angle. Image, when you use image, uh, you must provide the skills. Otherwise, people don't know the size, the relative size, right? Images are important for morphology. You can see this one is entangled. Regardless of the technical content, when you look at the figure, you can tell the difference. Map is not often used unless you deal with a global ambient air or something. Anything related to international, you may need this map. Based on the principles I introduced, what kind of mistakes you see here? I think first, this color is not needed, right? Look at the yellow one on uh, the background of white. It's the very unclear. You cannot see the yellow one. When you print it out on a piece of paper, you cannot see it either. The title is on the top. There was no emphasis. There are equations with R square values uh, separated from the data. There's no arrow pointing them to relate the equations to the data, so it's useless. 
it's worse than useless. It's because it takes up the white space. There should be a line here, right? But if you had that line, you see that it's a collapse on this area at the lower right, which is the legend. The legends are not very clear either. Right straw, 27 degrees. Right straw, you can remove all the right straw because they are all four right straw, right? Okay. And this is all gems, I call the visual clutter. X axis is name, but if you look very carefully, the scales are here. I separate it. Minor grid used here, but there was no minor grid for y for x axis, right? The y axis omits words. You see, there is a word here. Which, however, the y axis has only symbols. You can find even more problems with this figure. Tables, tables, are relatively easy. Uh, Remember, they are used for preciseness or precision. Okay. Again, there are many types of tables. Do not use them. Okay. Only use the plain one, just like this, very plain. Table caption on top. And you can have notes. When you do alignment, you align on the decimal points, the dots, rather than align left or right. Avoid visual clutter. Uh, we already mentioned that. Placement of visuals. You always place the visual right after its first appearance. Then your figure should be here, right after this paragraph. Do not separate them too far away. If you have non-essential, very long figures, very complicated, you would supplement information. This is how it looks like in the supplement. Even for a figure like this, you can see that they produce using black and white. There's no complication with color. This is uh, from my uh, textbook. Now I have a table very long. I don't want to insert into the text. So I put in the appendices. I said table 3A. Integration of visuals and the text, remember you go to back and forth. They must be able to explain and support each other, but they should remain relatively independent. Cross-reference, when you write in the text, these are for the cross-reference, these are all okay. These are the incorrect format for visuals. I'm gonna show you all. 